Okay, short story time. In 2021, so about four years ago at this point, when I decided to get myself a CNC machine, I wanted a Onefinity Woodworker, but the lead times were six to eight months and I just didn't have the patience to wait for that. So I decided to get a Shapeoko 3. And that machine was great. It helped me make a lot of money with my Etsy and e-commerce business, but I, uh, I just wasn't in love with the belt drive system. And a couple months ago, I got the opportunity to get a Onefinity Woodworker and I decided to make the switch. Um, again, my Shapeoko was great, but I wanted something that I could really push the feeds and speeds with. And I feel like that is the case with a ball screw system. So this isn't a review video by any means. Think of it more as a semi ASMR setup video where I'm gonna show you what it takes to set up this machine. And spoiler alert, it's not a bad setup at all. So let's get into it. So I've got my table all ready. Finally, we're at the point where I can start assembling this. So let's get to it. Table is all configured the way I want it. There's gonna be some changes in the future like cabinetry underneath, but for all intents and purposes, this table is ready to uh, start assembling the CNC. So. Let's get these parts over there and start assembling it. So I've got all my parts laid out here and uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna start getting things put together. I didn't follow the instructions. Um, I'll be the first to admit that. And I put the uh, top rail on backwards. So I just uh, I just unbolted it, got it flipped around the right way, and now I'm gonna bolt it back down and move forward. But uh, that's one thing to keep in mind. There is a right and wrong direction for that top rail. So pay attention to the instructions and don't waste 10 minutes like I just did. So the next step is to mount my controller box. Um, a lot of people will put it on the surface next to their machine. I've got some space underneath where I can still access the power button and the safety stop. So I'm going to mount this like this right under here where I can access everything. And then I will put a hole up through the wasteboard to the left of the machine to route my cables. I just need to add a little bit of spacer to uh, the bottom of this so that this will set down just low enough so I can reach that power button. So one thing I'll say I noticed almost immediately while putting this together is the build quality is insane. Like fantastic. Um, just everything has a nice weight to it, feels solid. And um, compared to the Shape Poco, it just, it just feels like a lot sturdier, more rigid machine.
All right, so I've just uh, attached the waste board, um, as you can see, and I think it's about time I surface it. Um, I also think I'm gonna do a grid pattern in this waste board. I think I'll do my T-tracks for my old CNC after the fact, but I wanna just kinda get something going. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna surface this and get, some, get a grid in it. So we'll see how that goes. I just spent a good 20 minutes trying to find my wrenches to put a new bit in the, uh, in the router, but we're good to go. Um, I have a surfacing bit in the router um, all tightened up and we're going to surface this spoil board so that we can do our first job. So the plan here is I'm going to surface the spoil board, then I'm going to run a grid job where I put um, like one inch by one inch squares all over my uh, spoil board so that I can line up projects and make sure that they are square to the gantry. So that is the plan right now and we'll see how it goes. I don't have my permanent dust collection set up, but I have my shot vac hooked up and I'm about to surface this waste board. So let me show, what, show you what's going on here. I've got my old Shapeoko uh, dust boot on there. I'm gonna throw the bottom half on in a second and I've got my shot vac hooked up and I'm about to do a 16th of an inch off this entire waste board so that we get it nice and flat. So I couldn't uh, fit the dust shoe on. That was poor planning on my part. But we're just gonna let it rip. It's working. I'm not sure if it's obvious by the mess in here, but I, um, when I started the job to surface the waste board, did not put my bottom half of my dust boot on and did not have enough room to slip it on there. So I just let the job go. Uh, we got our waste board surfaced and don't worry, I wore PPE after I realized it was gonna be a complete mess, but we've got our waste board surfaced. And the next step is to put a grid pattern on there. So that's what I'm gonna be doing. I'm gonna do that tomorrow morning. I am tired and I think I've done enough for today. So I'll catch you all tomorrow. As promised, it is tomorrow and I'm back in the shop and I only have a few things left to wrap up this Onefinity CNC setup. So as I mentioned yesterday, I'm putting a grid pattern on the waste board. I have my tool path set up for that. I'm gonna be using a V-bit so that I can keep the lines really thin but uh, visible. And I'm about to run that tool path. Once that's done, I'm just gonna do a sanding pass with my random orbit sander just to take any of the fuzzies down and make sure it looks nice and clean. So let's do that and then we're pretty much ready to start making projects. Well, it has been a few months since I actually set this machine up like you saw earlier in this video. And quite a bit has changed here since then. Most notably is I painted the shop. That black was just getting too much to keep clean and I needed a little bit more brightness in my life. So I changed that. Uh, in regard to the machine, I added a spindle. I was using an older router and I was just getting tired of rebuilding it. So I decided to get myself a spindle. Uh, I also set up dedicated dust collection to the machine. And this is an older bag dust collector that I use for the rest of my shop and I plumbed in the CNC for that. Eventually that'll get upgraded, but for now it's working great. I also have beat the heck out of this waste board and uh, it's been working great. The grid pattern really paid off. It's been really easy to just line things up and know that they're gonna be square with the machine. So that's been awesome. Highly recommend doing that if you have a uh, MDF or wood waste board. In the future, I, actually in the next couple weeks, I'm planning on putting a air weights vacuum table on this and I'm gonna document that whole process. So if that's something that you think would be interesting or helpful, uh, I encourage you to subscribe because that's gonna be coming out in a couple weeks. In regard to this machine, so like I mentioned earlier, I 
used to have a Shea Poco, and that was a great machine. I made a lot of money with that machine, learned how to do the whole CNC process with that machine, but I felt like the belt drive system of that machine was limiting. And going to the ball screw system on the Onefinity has allowed me to push my feeds and speeds a lot faster, which means I can do more production in the same amount of time. And that's important when you're running an Etsy shop or any kind of production setup where you're making products to sell. Because you know what they say, time is money. And that's been super helpful. Other than that, having a display and a computer built right into the machine, so to speak, is, is nice too. I don't have to have a dedicated computer like I did with the Shea Poco, and that's been super nice as well. I hope this has given you some insight into what it takes to set one of these up. I think all in, including the time it took me to shoot the footage for this video, I have maybe three hours or less in the setup of this, and it would have been a lot quicker if I wasn't shooting video. It's just awesome how Onefinity does a lot of the work for you with the rails already being mostly set up. You just have to screw everything together, square it all up, and uh, put your uh, put your Z-axis on. Hopefully that was helpful, and I will see you guys in the next one.